What's up guys, Steve here. Got my man Mason, Mason and beautiful is back there on the couch being lazy. Just kidding babe, love you. All right, so today we're gonna show you how to replace the cold side charge pipe on 2011 through 2018. 6.7 liter Ford F-250 power stroke. Man, it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. That's it, three times fast. Yeah, three times fast. Oh wait, it, 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 I don't know. So if you guys have ever had uh, F-250 in this, in that range for long enough, I guarantee you, you probably had an issue or at least you've heard of an issue with your intercooler pipe bursting. It's made out of plastic. They went with cheap materials for some reason and they're prone to failure. And a uh, funny story about four years ago when the last, the last time this thing happened, failed on us, we went to the dealership and I'm trying to de describe what it was because I don't know what it was. This was my first time owning one of these F-250s and I was trying to describe it to him, told him what happened before I could even get get out the rest of my description guy literally just bends over pulls out a box puts it on the counter and says here you go and i was just blown away i didn't even give him the, the the year model of the truck or anything like that it was just such a common failure that they kept a whole stack of them behind the counter so ford do better <laughs> all right other than that it's been a good truck we've had very few problems with it but this this stupid intercooler pipe has really been a pain. So, Does it help that it's plastic and Texas heat? And everything yeah, like exa exactly. It's just going to be prone to failure with all the heat and everything else. But anyway, this time around, I did some research and I saw that Sinister Diesel makes an aftermarket version of that pipe that doesn't require any mods at all. It's just direct fit replacement, except that this one is aluminum and it's bored out a little bit more. So it's got a little bit more airflow that's going to happen through it. It's got all your connectors for the uh, sensor stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited about this is what it looks like guys looks like that There's a brand sinister diesel great American company and that's what it fits. That's what it is So anyway, I'm excited to get this thing swapped out and I hope that this is the last time We have to replace this part on this truck. Yeah, I'll never forget our faces the first time it happened when We were in town and we like lost all power The first time it happened we thought that we lost the turbo because we heard a loud sound and we were going like 50 or so we were actually getting up on uh we we're going up an on ramp on onto the loop here in town and that's what happened and we lost all power and the turbo gauges went down to zero you want to talk about a heart sinking moment yep, it was pretty scary. That, that was pretty scary <laughs> so right? that, when it happened again this time i like uh -huh. already knew i was like oh yeah that's what it was. yeah that's what it was so you don't realize just how much these trucks need this to be connected and working until you don't have it. No turbo boost on that truck means you've got zero power and it runs terrible. So we're pretty, we're pretty happy that we found an aftermarket replacement and we're going to get this bad boy swapped out and hopefully it's not too painful. Last time it wasn't that bad. So I don't think it'll take much time. But we're going to take you guys along. Yeah. In there. So got my man Devin in here. He's gonna move the truck over in front of the shop. Devin has been doing really good, learning how to drive, right buddy? Yes, sir. So we've been doing a lot of practicing because he will be driving age not too long, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so he's gonna move this. You dropped my keys, man. I saw nothing. I saw it, everybody saw it. <laughs> he's gonna move it to the, in front of the shop and uh, we're gonna see if we can't get this thing knocked out while Beautiful and uh, Mason, I think they're going over to work, work with the pigs a little bit. All right, crack her up. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the video, but there's a loud hissing sound. So real quick, just wanted to do a breakdown of what came out of the box. So this is what the box looks like. Really nice instruction manual from Sinister Diesel. You guys did an awesome job on that. Look at that color, nice rubber boot. It's that aluminum piece and your clamps. And there's like a little uh, 
little spring clip in here as well. I'll take all these out here in a minute and show you guys when we go to put them together. But right now, we're going to go ahead and take out the old one. Okay. You going to help? Yes, sir. My man Devin's going to help. All right, guys, real quick, I want to show you what happened. So you see where it connects right there to the throttle body? See how it's all busted? This is the part that actually came off. So this is where it failed this time. Last time, it failed right here at this elbow, and it burst, and it was all cracked right here, and the air was just getting out right there. So in this case, it was a different different spot. Same component, though. Piece of junk. So that's what we're going to replace. It looks like, I'm guessing, a 10-millimeter socket. I'm going to go double-check that. So a deep socket there. And a flathead screwdriver would typically get this off, but it's already off here because that's where it broke. There's one more socket right down in there on the bottom of that boot where it makes a 90. All right, guys, I know this is overkill, but we couldn't find a 11 millimeter deep socket. It's always a socket you need that you can't find. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. So I got this impact set that I bought a while back. Nico, Nico, I don't know the name of the brand. I don't know how to pronounce it right there. I'll put the link down below for this. If you guys are interested in this set, really nice impact ready set. Comes with all these nice extensions, all that good stuff there. And I've actually yet to use it for anything. And it's pretty funny, the first time we're gonna use this thing is for a tiny little <laughs> nut and an 11 millimeter socket. But we just couldn't find a regular deep socket, 11 millimeter, and I didn't wanna have to jack with you trying to get a wrench in there. So nice set, I just wanna show you guys that real quick. So that's what we're gonna do. If you've seen the video while we're using a big old half inch, that's why I couldn't find the socket. So here's my overkill of a contraption here but it does fit i want to show you guys that also there's one that's way down there and because of this long long extension here that's going to make it really easy to get down there so all we're looking to do on this is just to loosen it enough to where it'll come apart and we can yank it out also before we pull this out these coolant lines here these snap out here you don't have to disconnect any of this i saw a video where a guy actually went through and disconnected all these lines. There's absolutely no reason to disconnect these lines. If you look just with one hand here, because I'm holding the camera, you can get to all this. All right, so once you pull it out, you're gonna have one little sensor that's plugged in here, and that's just a little push button, and it pulls right out. Junk. All right, guys, this is the old OEM piece of junk. Thin plastic, rubber, whatever it is, you can just tell that it's just not very durable. And this is only about three, maybe four years old, max, guys. And that's what it did. All right, just junk. It just came apart. All right, look at the Sinister Diesel. Nice aluminum. I don't know if blue is your color. I actually kind of like the color. Nice little logo there, too. And a very, very high-density rubber boot on that bottom section. One thing I want to point out is the sensor on your old one needs to be taken out. The female end needs to be taken out and needs to be relocated to over here. So it's in a slightly different spot, but there's plenty of slack underneath the hood, as you guys saw earlier. To get your sensor off the old one, all you gotta do is slightly lift up on this little tab here and turn it about a quarter of a turn until it stops. You can see it won't go anymore. I'm not gonna force it and I can just pull it straight out. That's what the inside of it looks like. Make sure you don't touch this, don't do anything with it. You can clean it if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just gonna put it directly back in on this other one. So you can do the reverse. I put it in there, quarter of a turn. This is a little bit tighter on this side. All right, but that's nice and snug. So that's there. Now all we have left to do is to go attach this to the truck. You guys can see from the old one, these are the spring clamps, whatever you want to call them. We've got brand new ones in this kit. And if you've never installed these before, all you're looking to do is bottom out this spring. So when you're tightening this, once this spring is fully compressed so that you can't see the gaps in between it, it's usually tight enough. And of course, a good old tug, tug check will uh, suffice as well. But you definitely want to make sure that these things are nice and tight because there's a lot of pressure that, and a lot of air that moves through this and you don't want it blowing off. Here we've got the spring clip. This is what holds the, the top part into the throttle body. We'll show you guys that in a minute. Just for reference, this is gonna face the front of the truck 
put this on the back it's going to give you a little it's going to make it a little bit easier for you to hit this with a deep socket i also think that once i get it down in there because this is a little bit different than the old one this one's going to need to go on probably about like that so that's going to face it like this for reference we're going to have to use a socket uh, a smaller socket to tighten that one up because it's going to face sideways towards the engine All right, guys, that's it. That little spring clip right there, pretty self-explanatory, just slips right over, fits in the grooves, you wiggle it back and forth till you make sure that it's nice and tight and firm and that it's actually sunk into that groove there. And then we got it all in there. You can see the clamps right there. Like I said, you just wanna make sure that the springs are compressed and that it's nice and firm, that there's no slack in the rest of the clamp. There's our sensor right there. This is that extra piece. So we're simply going to plug this back in, just like that. Hear the click, it's good to go. This is gonna be on there. You can either leave it, cut it off, doesn't matter, I'm gonna leave it, I don't wanna jack with it. Coolant line snap back into place, and that's our finished product, guys. Now we're gonna go start it up, see what it sounds like, see if we got our power back. Go ahead, Deb. You got the key still, right? Yes, sir, they're in the truck. All right, go start it up, we're gonna listen for it. All right guys, so that was surprisingly not a difficult change. It took a little bit of patience to get the boot, the rubber boot installed down on the bottom just because there's not a lot of clearance. But if you take your time, if you're patient with it, it'll go in just fine. Same thing with those little spring clamps. It took a little bit more patience to get those tightened because it was kind of an awkward angle, the one on the top was, but you just stick with it and it, it got tightened. And you can tell night and day the OEM versus this aftermarket is just, you can't even compare it. So Sinister Diesel is the brand. Thank you guys for making that part and keeping me from having to replace another stupid OEM one. I'm trying to teach my boy about financial freedom and financial security. And one of the things is, is you know, these trucks, this truck's paid off. And I'm going to keep it that way. And part of taking care of it is putting better parts on it. Because I want this thing to last for a while. I'm going to drive it till the wheels fall off, right, buddy? Mm -hmm. And... Um, so we got that part replaced. We're gonna take it down the road. We're gonna do a little bit of test driving, make sure everything sounds good. But here underneath the hood, everything looks really well. I'm gonna put the links to this specific part down below. Like I said, it goes to the 2011 to 2018 six, seven liter power stroke Ford F-250. And those tools that, that I use the, uh, what was it called? The impact socket set yep. saved our butt today. Even though it was kind of overkill for this job, I wanna put the link down below because it's a nice little tool set. In case you guys are interested in that anyway thanks for watching the video hope it helped you guys if you have any questions at all on the install process or the removal of the old one or anything in general y'all hit us up in the comment section below and we'll be happy to help thanks for watching guys and see you on the next video bye